Hello folks, welcome to episode 3. Today we'll be going over how to properly clean your guitar. We'll be going over fretboard and body and what stuff we'll be using and what stuff to avoid using for different things but won't you join me over there. Yes Jack, so episode 3, cleaning your guitar as it says on this here list. So, what you might have noticed is that I look very similar to what I looked like in episode 2. That is very simply because this whole route between episode 2 and 5 yep, is all basically one scenario but I'm going to isolate each point into each episode individually. So, we are back again with my Avenger A6 and like I said those strings have been on for a wee while and it's not the cleanest looking guitar right now, it's by no means the dirtiest looking guitar. I've seen some disgusting guitars in my time, but it's not the cleanest and it could be cleaner. So, just a quick overview, this guitar has a rosewood fretboard, which means I'll be using some specific materials. And here's what they will be. If you're using a rosewood or ebony fretboard, you'll want to use very similar. So, here are the strings that are going to magically disappear at some point in this video. You're going to need a dust cloth. I can use a dust cloth or you can use a rag or whatever. And it doesn't really matter so long as, well actually microfiber will probably be the best because then you don't get bits of fluff on your fretboard. But I'm not that classy. I use dust cloth. Because it's a rosewood fretboard, I'll be using Dunlop 65 Ultimate Lemon Oil. Dunlop also do a 65 for maple necks. It's slightly different because uh, lemon oil is better on rosewood and ebony as it. Quick look at my notes and yep lemon oil doesn't really do anything to the wood of the guitar really. It might take some grime out of it which might make it look a little bit lighter potentially sometimes or if you put some more and it gets into the grooves it can look a bit darker. It's entirely dependent on the state of the fretboard at the current point in time. But what it does is essentially it um, doesn't let the fretboard dry out because once a fretboard starts to dry out it doesn't sound as nice uh, to my opinion it doesn't sound as nice and also it doesn't look as nice it looks like dry wood and dry wood isn't a very appealing thing to look at so just good for general cleaning and for keeping your guitar nice and happy lemon oil for rosewood and ebony fretboards like I said Dunlop 65 has an orange bottle which is from maple I can't really remember the difference but I think it's some kind of mineral oil um, I'll put a link to this stuff from the Dunlop site into the description of the video. So, what we're going to do is we're going to quickly clean off the dust and finger marks from the guitar. Now this is very very simple to do. I wouldn't use lemon oil because it's a bit, well, it's a bit of a waste of the oil really. One thing to use is saliva, it's a bit disgusting but your saliva has enzymes in it which break down gunk, it's what it's built to do. So I won't be doing it on video but what I usually do is lick the tip of the cloth and wipe around or lick the guitar but that's a wee bit too 80s, a wee bit too glam for me right now especially when I'm being on film. So what I'm just going to do is gently rub at the guitar in this fashion. And what you're wanting to do is make sure there's no finger marks or scuffs, it doesn't matter if you knock any of the toggle switches or volume knobs because it doesn't really matter, you can just fix it when you're plugging it in to tune it. Which is also going to be episode 5. The main point of cleaning the guitar or the main areas you might want to focus on are under the strings because you're not going to be able to clean under the strings very well. You can usually clean your guitar body when you've got strings on it but whenever I'm taking strings off to change the gauge or they're getting a bit worn out or one of them's failed, I will always clean the guitar body as well as it's just good form and good uh, practice. But that space under the pickup, under the strings rather, between the pickups is usually the most dusty because that's where all your skin collects when you've been playing guitar. And that's the least available bit to clean when strings are on it. So, I think that's not too bad. I have a scuff actually on my guitar. Ben knocked it when I was putting it down and left a big white score in a black finish. So, unfortunate. Also, there's a thing about necks. You can get gloss necks, gloss finished necks, which copy the finish of the body and the headstock. 
I prefer satin, so I might at some point take this off and use fine metal uh, steel wool to kind of soften out, but that's a totally different video. Right, so the body's not looking too bad anymore. Of course, since I'm using a gloss black guitar, I'm going to end up getting fingerprint marks all over it anyway. But hey ho, at least I got most of the dust and grime off of it. Now onto the fretboard, which is the most important part of cleaning. So if you're going to use lemon oil or any kind of fretboard cleaner, there are lots. You don't have to just use lemon oil, it's what I prefer to use. What you're going to want to do is not spray directly onto the fretboard. I've done it in the past, it's just too much lemon oil really. So what you're going to want to do is make a fine pad out of the cloth. I usually do this by folding in half, folding in half again and then putting a little corner onto it so I can get around the frets quite easily. So I'll do something like that. So there's a bit of area there that's all nice and flat, there's no ridges, they're on the other side, that's where my hand's going to be. And then I'll use that little point to get in amongst the frets. But first off, you're going to want a little pad like this. We're going to spray. That was probably a wee bit too much, you don't need loads, but I'm going to go all the way over the fretboard quickly just to get oil distributed. I would also add that putting your cloths in the washing machine after doing this is a good idea because they get covered in hair just by being around the place and uh, that hair can get stuck in the oil and it doesn't look very pretty. So wash your rags as well. Now that we've got lemon oil on the fretboard, so what we're going to want to do is find that point on your cloth that we just made and we're going to start at the top end well, I do anyway, because it's the biggest area of wood first. And we're going to start right beside the nut. Get that sliver, that little point of cloth we just made. Get it between our thumb and pointing finger. And really get into that kind of corner so there's no grime in the corner of there. Then we're going to take little circular motions. Work our way around the fret wood. Up to the first fret. And you're going to use your nail. If you, I've not got a nail there. But what you're going to use is you're going to try and get that corner of the cloth into the side of the fret to make sure there's no grime build up on that side of the fret. Give the fret a little bit of a polish while you're there just by making sure it's nice and shiny. No dust, no grime, no anything unseemly on it. And then you're going to move to the second fret because what you'll genuinely find is that your fingers will not be clean all the time you're playing guitar. That's just how it happens. You're going to sweat. You're going to be live, stuff could fall on it, you're going to get beer or whatever your preferred stage drink is, it'll end up on the guitar. doesn't matter if you're singing at the same time, playing guitar, playing bass, it's going to get somewhere. You're going to have products you don't want on your fretboard, on your fretboard at some point. But the main thing you'll find is you'll be doing loads of exercises, as you should, and you're going to get loads and loads of finger ming and skin cells and dust on the grain of the wood and you get these really unseemly finger marks. Usually wherever you fret the guitar you're going to end up with little raised bits of gunk. And it's just skin cells and dust that come off your fingertips and any dust that's collected on sweat marks on the guitar. Now on older guitars you're just going to end up with them anyway because eventually you're going to wear away the wood. I know that it sounds a weird thing, skin wearing away wood, but over years and years and years of playing, it does eventually happen, especially if you're doing lots of vibrato. Sometimes the string will hit the wood, depending on how forceful or emotive or aggressive you're being, and you're just going to eventually wear away the fretboard. It'll not look as bad as having finger marks on it, it'll just usually have a bit of worn look, which is cool if you're into relic guitars. But right now we're just aiming to get all these bits of grime and dust off the fretboard. And we're just trying to get make sure that you're getting around each and every fret. So you don't get a nice clean wood, but grimy frets, because that's not nice. It doesn't sound as good, and it's a bit of a pain. So we're going to fast forward. Okay, so now that we've done that, 
What I've just done there is I'm wiping down the fretboard and all the frets just to get any final bits of hair or anything that's fallen off your clothes or off the cloth if you've not washed it, like I haven't. I'll be putting this in the washing machine after. But also the most important thing is that you soak up any excess oil that's on the fretboard because as though it is a good cleaner it will sometimes break down things that you want to be kept in the guitar. So if you leave it too long, it can end up knackering the frets a little bit. They can get a little bit rusted because if you have lemon contact, then your sweat's going to go all over the place. It's, it's just not too good to have too much oil, but it is a very good cleaning material, cleaning compound rather. So it's good to keep a little bit, but not loads on your fret. And then you just want to give it a nice wee polish off. And there we go. And that's really it to cleaning your guitar. It's not an overly difficult task, but it's something you need to do. It's a very important thing to take care of your instrument, because at the end of the day you have to think of it as a tool. Yes, it is a beautiful piece of wood and metal and everything else, but at the end of the day it is a tool for being used in the studio and stage, and as a tool for you learning how to comprehend music theory and applying it properly. And you always, always take care of your tools, otherwise they're going to fail on you, and that's never good. And they're also very expensive. So you want to make sure it's in its peak condition at all times. So, that's cleaning your guitar. Just a little bit of elbow grease for the body and headstock, back of the neck, wherever you want to clean it, wherever it needs cleaned, really. Always focus when your strings have come off on between the pickups and between pickups and the bridge, because that's a notoriously tricky bit to get when strings are on it. And then, like I said, any kind of fretboard cleaner will do it, but I like Dunlop 65 Lemon Oil. And that's just for making sure all the grime is off your fretboard, make sure to focus in and around the frets, and that's us really. So here's the final product. Ignore those marks, they've been there for quite some time. It's just wear on the neck really. It used to be nice and shiny and now it's a wee bit worn out. I used to play it lots. And that's some excess lemon oil as well. So like I said, what you're wanting to do is make sure all those finger marks are gone. Wipe off as much excess lemon oil as you can. I've got some, that's not even grime anymore, that's just worn out marks. Because I've, I've been playing it for quite a while now, and I play it every day for a few hours. So, there we go, nice clean guitar body. Again, these are the materials you want to be using. So your dust cloth there, your lemon oil, not your camera strap. Like I said, Dunlop 65 lemon oil, though there are many, many other kinds of oil to use. This is what I use as my preference. So that's the final product and this is the end of episode 3, I hope you enjoyed. If you have enjoyed it, feel free to like and subscribe to the channel as uh, so there's going to be a few more of these episodes and they're all going to be in the same playlist as well once I get this episode uploaded. So thank you very much for tuning in, I hope this has been educational and helpful and I'll catch you all in a couple of days time. See ya!